Good evening to you and thank you for joining us. I'm Amanda Kenny. For the past five years, the Sons of the American Legion have maintained the Union AME Cemetery in Hollidaysburg. But the new phase of the project is bringing its history back to life. Our Colleen Knudsen joins us now live in Blair County. So Colleen, tell us what has the cleanup process been like for this cemetery? Well, Amanda, they're calling it an archaeology and history project combo. And after hand scrubbing each headstone, they actually sit down to learn more about each one of them. And the veterans with the Sons of the American Legion decided to redo all the headstones at the cemetery last year, but had no idea about the history that it holds. Simon Wade, owner of Simon's Masonry and Concrete, says it's more than just another day at work, going a step further and researching who these people are and whose headstones were at one point illegible. You get a certain connection with them, you spend uh, quite a bit of time working on that stone and it enables you to look them up and you know, see where they're from. You get a, a connection with them and, and every one of them in here has been that way. A little bit more information about the cemetery. It doesn't have an official owner, but it is a tax exemption for the borough. It's believed that a good number of African American soldiers from the Civil War era are buried here, and as crews continue to work, more of their history comes to light. In Hollidaysburg, I'm Colleen Knudsen, WTAJ News. Colleen, thank you. Emergency crews in Blair County responded to a crash in Freedom Township this morning. It happened just before 9 a.m. at the Walmart intersection. One vehicle was heading south when the other heading north crossed into the path of the southbound vehicle. The red Honda HRV had four people inside, including two minors in the back seat, both secured in child seats in the back. Now, one officer says the situation could have been much worse. Going on somewhere around 30 years of law enforcement experience, so throughout my career, uh, I've been made a believer over and over again in child restraint systems. Most cops will tell you, most patrol cops will tell you, they've seen it over and over again where kids were spared significant injury by being properly restrained in a, in a child restraint system. The officer adds that parents should put all kids in a safety system. Only minor injuries were reported in the crash. Meantime, in Center County, one man faces serious charges for allegedly punching a woman. According to police, 57-year-old Jeffrey Gonzalez punched the woman in the face multiple times and threatened her with a knife. It happened at a residence on Empire Court Road in Potter Township around 8.40 p.m. on June 20th. Gonzalez faces charges of terroristic threats, simple assault, and harassment. Pennsylvania State Police in Huntington are searching for a man who has been missing for nearly two months. 46-year-old Stephen Brody hasn't been seen or heard from since late April. Police found his truck a few days later in a secluded wooded area on May 2nd. Multiple searches have come up with nothing, and police are now turning to the public for more information. After the vehicle was discovered, he was reported missing by a family member, and the only information that we have is he was last seen on the 30th of April. Anyone with information is asked to contact Pennsylvania State Police. And in staying in Huntington County, police are searching for two suspects who they say tried to rob a bank in Mount Union. It happened around 4 a.m. on June 19th. Troopers were called to the Community State Bank on East Shirley Street. We're told two men broke a window with a sledgehammer to get inside. One suspect cut his arm and hand on the glass. The pair took off when the alarm activated, but troopers say it, the two could have hit other homes in the area. There is actually several other burglaries in that general area that night that they believe are connected to this same incident. If you have any information, you're asked to call state police in Huntington. It's time now for a look at your evening forecast. Our meteorologist Mike Doyle is here, and you're looking at mm. some hot weather, huh? Yeah, it's fair. It's quite warm for today, and each day will become a little bit warmer than the last. And it's a good chance a few of us could reach the uh, 90 degree mark by the end of this uh, work week. Our Doppler for today, holding on to a lot of sunshine. There are a few passing clouds. On a day like today, you want to stay hydrated. You want to find some shade and stay cool and apply that sunscreen. And that will be the case throughout the next couple of days. I'll put this in motion. A few clouds moving on through. But that's really about it for us here in central PA. Showers and storms up towards our north and east. A low pressure system is up that way. And 
Could bring us a stray shower for tomorrow and maybe even a shower or two for our Wednesday. But this week looks to be quite warm and on the drier side compared to the past couple of weeks. Our temperatures right now 83 in Altoona, Johnstown 81, Dubois 80, Clearfield 84, Somerset at 75. Our close look down towards the south, Claysburg 85 right now, New Paris at 79, Evansburg at 79 degrees up towards the north. Belfont 89, Phillipsburg 81, and Brookville at 81 degrees for this evening. Our dew point temperatures, 50s for most, a few of us the lower 60s. And it's really not too bad. When these numbers crawl into the mid to upper 60s, that's when you could feel a difference and it turns quite muggy and uh, humid. That's not the case, though. Our winds are coming out of the north, and that's a good flow for us. Still warm, but we tap into a drier air mass when our winds are coming from the north. And... Um, that's why our dew points are in the 50s uh, for a lot of us. For tonight, a mostly clear sky and comfortable. 59 degrees in Clearfield. Dubois at 58. Altoona 60. Bedford 59 degrees throughout the overnight hours. Not too bad. You can still crack open that window and allow that cool air to come in and to cool off our homes. I don't think AC will be needed for tonight. You need to get that yard work done the next couple of days. Again, mainly dry, so I'm giving it the green light throughout the next four days. But there will be a shower or two for our Tuesday and Wednesday. I'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes. Mike, thank you. Now for a look at the latest COVID-19 cases reported by the Pennsylvania Department of Health. 492 new cases are reported today. That brings the statewide total to almost 86,000 since the start of the pandemic. 6,600 Pennsylvanians have died. Of those infected, 78% have recovered. Eight of those new cases were in central PA, six in Huntington County. Huntington also has the most cases in our region with 251, though many of them come from SCI Huntington. Center is up to 201, Bedford 81, Cambria 78, Blair and Clearfield have 72. Part of downtown Altoona will shut down to create more space for restaurants while maintaining social distancing. Starting this Wednesday, July 1st, 14th Street will be closed in between 11th Avenue and 11th Avenue Alley by First Lutheran Church. Mayor Matt Pacifico says they wanted to create a way for businesses to thrive while continuing to follow safety guidelines. We have to be creative in how we adjust to the new normals that are a result of COVID-19. The space will be open for public use. The street closure will continue through the summer and be extended to after Labor Day. Well, many restaurants have turned to delivery during the COVID-19 pandemic. Orders on apps like Grubhub and DoorDash are growing more common as a result. But what if some orders you make on these apps were never agreed to by the restaurant? Irvin Hinckley sat down with local businesses who say this happened to them. He joins us now live in State College. So, Evan, can you explain here, how does something like this happen? Well, Amanda, to appear on DoorDash or Grubhub, most business owners, including Maine Bay and Barry here in State College, they thought you had to have a contract or a formal agreement with those apps. But as they soon found out, to have DoorDash or even Grubhub post an account on their app, they don't need approval from the restaurant. It's a standard process, a delivery driver running in to pick up an order. But for Sean Knight, co-owner of Main Bay & Barry, a Grubhub driver coming through his door raised a red flag. We were a little confused by that because the only two people that do deliveries here are Chris and myself, two owners. We're the only ones that deliver to our customers. Or so he thought. Until he saw there was a restaurant account he never agreed to, created for Main Bay & Barry by someone at Grubhub. It was actually a complete surprise to us. We were being forced to participate in their platform without any type of permission on our behalf. On the page, they posting an incorrect logo, some incorrect menu items, and prices Knight says are about 20% higher. We've worked incredibly hard here to have a very good reputation in this area. And if you look at the Better Business Bureau ratings of Grubhub, they're a C or C minus rating. And I don't want to be associated with a C or C minus rating. There is also no disclaimer of no official affiliation with Grubhub and the restaurant. And Sean says he's not the only one experiencing this. My experience uh, is very similar with DoorDash. More than 20 other local restaurant leaders, many wishing to remain anonymous, told us the exact same story. I feel like I've been in the restaurant industry in town for about 10 years, and everybody I've talked to have had an issue with either or. 
Grubhub tells WTAJ they add restaurants to their app when they see, quote, local diner demand, adding that this is a model other delivery companies like DoorDash use, so they're doing the same thing to stay competitive. But in the paragraph right below this, Grubhub then says they are supporting efforts by officials to stop restaurants from being listed without an owner's permission. I think they're just being ambiguous. Uh, because at this point they can play both sides of the coin, so to speak. Our legal analyst says when it comes to the legality of this, the answer is clear. The quick answer to that is no. This is a consumer fraud issue. This is a restaurant fraud issue. Um, you know, it, it, it borders on um, a criminal act. And our legal analyst Tony DeBoof told us that anyone impacted by this should reach out to the state attorney general's office. That's something the folks at Maine Bay and Barry have already done. However, they have yet to hear back from AG Josh Shapiro. In the meantime, though, Maine Bay and Barry has had their page removed from Grubhub. Reporting live here in State College, Evan Hakley, WTAJ News. Evan, thank you. An organization in Blair County is giving back to the community by donating more than $27,000. The Altoona Rotary Club provided the money to help fund organizations, events, projects, and operations. Blair County organizations were asked to apply for grants earlier this year based on proceeds raised from the Grapes for Good fundraiser. 16 organizations across the country have since received funds throughout the year. Well, this year, Independence Day will be brought to you. You can tune in to the fabulous 4th of July fireworks show right here on WTAJ. You'll be able to watch a spectacular display of fireworks from the comfort of your own home. WRTA Talk Radio will join us and will broadcast patriotic music during the show. Again, join us on WTAJ News this 4th of July from 9.30 p.m. to 10 to see the full show. And for today, gorgeous day overall, a lot of sunshine out there, but tomorrow a few more clouds, maybe a stray shower. I'll talk more about that shower coming up in a few minutes.